The 19th century in America was a time for expansion and growth. The movement west led to interaction with Native Americans and white American settlers. Violence and hatred between the two groups became a theme on the western frontier. While many interactions between whites and Native Americans were not successful, Utah's history contains a relationship that flourished. This success story is found in the life of Chief Kanash, a Ute chief who made peace with white Mormon pioneers. Most historians agree that Chief Kanash was born in Southern California in the year of 1828. Between the years of 1842 and 1843, Kanash's mother moved him to Utah to claim Kanash's position as chief after his father's death. In the summer of 1847, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints entered the Salt Lake Valley. In the years following, Brigham Young, the church's president, sent members to colonize the areas surrounding the Salt Lake region. In 1851, at the age of 23, Kanash met Mormons for the first time. Weeks after Kanash's first contact with Mormons, he met Brigham Young. The first encounter between the two men would lead to a lifelong friendship. On their first meeting, Kanash explained that his people had been successful in agriculture and wished to continue their knowledge in growing crops. Kanash told President Young, He was not fond of roaming and wished to be instructed in tilling the soil. This information was greatly accepted by Mormon settlers because they understood the desires of Kanash and his Vermont band. Gaining the trust of the Mormons provided to be very beneficial to Kanash's future. Chief Kanash approached life and Mormon settlement differently than most of his Ute chief counterparts. Kanash wanted to find ways to coexist. He gained the trust of the local Mormons by interacting with younger children and teaching Mormons his native Ute language. Kanash also joined the Mormon church in 1858. Although Kanash may have joined the Mormon church for political reasons initially, his commitment grew and he became a faithful member of the church. Sally was an orphaned Native American girl who grew up in Brigham Young's home. While visiting with Young in Salt Lake City, Kanash became acquainted with Sally. After a long courtship, the couple married in 1871. They were married and sealed by Brigham Young in the endowment house in Salt Lake City. The couple continued to live in Kanash, Utah, where they enjoyed a happy marriage. As a member of the LDS Church, Kanash became good friends with Bishop Thomas Callister. At Callister's funeral, Kanash said the following, Although our bodies are laid in the lonesome grave, I believe that our spirits yet live, that they go to the Great Father, where all is peace and no sorrow, that our day of mourning will be past, that we will there meet our friends and kindred, never to be parted again by death. It will be a time of rejoicing for all nations and people who have done right here on the earth. Soon after the death of his friend Thomas Callister, Kanash also passed away due to illness. He died December 4, 1881. His life was celebrated by both whites and Native Americans in Millard County. The legends and stories of Chief Kanash live on today. Just north of Kanash, Utah, the Kanash Paiute Indian Reservation still exists, where members of Kanash's band live on the land he once governed. 